Good day everyone and welcome to a Minecraft Redstone tutorial video. Today we're going to be talking about my automatic sugarcane, pumpkin and watermelon farm and showing you block by block how to make this. So let's get started. Let's start with the sugarcane farm. Everything you need to build this is in this chest right here. Pause the video and take note of all the, all the different items. A couple of things before we start. These can be any kind of leaves, they don't have to be oak leaves. This can be grass or dirt or even sand if you like. I personally prefer the look of the grass because it goes with all the rest of the green. These can be any kind of block that will hold water, so it will stop water from flowing out. Um, and these can be any, any kind of blocks the redstone can sit on. So they could even be glass or slabs or anything like that. They do not need to be powered, they don't have to even be a full block. And finally, the lime wool. These are just for the ends of the slime, just to stop lines from sticking together. Uh, they can be any anything you want. I like to stick with either lime wool or lime green concrete. Other than that, this is all you need for one segment. This is one segment. That's 15 segments. But for one segment, that's everything you'll need, plus the water bucket, for to build this. If you're building it in Java, you will also need two, two redstone repeaters and one extra smooth stone block. So how about first I explain to you how this works. First of all, to place sugar cane on top of any block, it needs to be hydrated. No matter how much I click on this, it will not take the sugar cane at all. The second I put some water behind it, the sugar cane will happily grow. If we put an observer directly behind the bottom sugar cane, every time this sugar cane here tries to grow, it will give out a redstone signal, just like it just did then. Even though it didn't grow, it still gave out a redstone signal. So we can hijack that redstone signal simply by putting, say, a block there, bit of redstone dust and a piston or a sticky piston every time the observer detects that this is trying to grow it'll fire the piston off just like that now if we come back over here that's exactly what we've done we have an observer sitting right here powering this block which powers this redstone which powers those repeaters which powers the pistons the slime blocks are holding everything together so when this piston pushes everything from this block including this block all the way to this block including this block gets pushed out pushed over and fires the whole thing and because we have one observer for two pistons we can get 24 sugarcane all being harvested at the exact same moment before i get into the tutorial on how to build this this is the maximum size you can make using one observer over here what i actually have is i've got if you pay attention you have one observer there and you've actually got another one over here right there and that has allowed me to make this 48 blocks wide instead of just 24 blocks. So to start off with, we're going to place 24 blocks, dirt, sand, or grass in a row. So that's one, two, three, three, four. On the back, we're going to use any solid block that can contain water. And we're going to do another 24 blocks in a row as well, just like we did with the grass. Next, we're going to grab our water blockers and we're going to count eight blocks in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And on number eight, we're going to put our water, our water bucket and we're going to go to the other end and do the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that will hydrate every single one of these blocks so we can now plant the sugar cane on them. So let's do that now. Now, now what we're going to do is we're going to cover the water with leaves this will just make it look a bit nicer you could use any block that doesn't stick to slime balls and we're going to do a second row two blocks higher so we're leaving a one block gap in between just like that that way when the slime blocks are sitting in between here they can move back and forth freely without pulling these blocks with them now we're going to put our lime wall you can use anything as well as well like i said over there i use lime concrete i'm using the lime wall here because it's cheaper and i think most people can get that on day one so we're going to count out 10 slime blocks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And we're going to put another block of wool. That is 12 blocks. That is the push limit of a piston. We're going to do the same on the other side so that we have two rows of 12. And then we're going to punch out one of these two blocks underneath the wall. Doesn't matter which one. And we're going to replace it with an observer. Make sure that you've got the little red dot on the back because this is the power side and that way the observer is watching the sugar cane itself. And that is the majority of it built. Now let's get to the redstone side of it. Now the redstone for this is incredibly simple, but it does differ slightly whether you're on Java or Bedrock. So I'm going to show you both. Let's start with Bedrock because it's a lot simpler on Bedrock. If you're on Bedrock, we're just going to knock out these two slime blocks for a moment and chuck a temporary block on the back of each of those wool, each of those wool blocks. Come to the other side and place your sticky pistons facing this way and replace the two slime blocks. And then we can just break the two temporary blocks. Then what we're going to do is we're going to put two, our two blocks here. This one here has to be a solid block. It has to be 
a solid block that can take a redstone signal. This one doesn't have to be at all. And then literally just put the two redstone dust here, and that is li that is li quite literally the whole farm built. If that is if you're in bedrock. Now the problem with this design for Java is that when a red when you get a redstone pulse, it's gonna <laughs> the pist the sticky piston will spit out its block just like that, and then that will actually prevent the sugarcane from growing. We don't want that at all. So the way we fix that is we're going to move one of these pistons. One, f one block further away. So we'll put the temporary block there, put the p sticky piston in and replace the slime. And we'll come back around here, get rid of the temporary block. And then we're gonna break that dust and put a block down here. And we'll put a re repeater on two ticks and another repeater on two ticks. Just be, mo be aware that the block with the dust on it has to be behind the observer itself. So make sure that the observer is gonna power this block, which will power this redstone dust. And that fixes it up for, for Java. So now you have the same farm that works on both Java and on Bedrock. To build multiple layers of this like I did over, over there, you would quite simply just put the dirt block here, the solid block here, and the water in the same places, eight blocks away, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and on the eighth block. And the reason we do the eighth block is because it means it'll flow all the way to the end, but it won't actually fall off. And then you don't even need a side on this if you don't want to. If you want to leave it open like that, you can. Now one thing worth mentioning is this. As you can see, this is one, one single module, and when they break, because it's slime, they actually get flung quite a distance away. And as you build this higher, this, these actually travel further and further. They'll even come out to about here. So it's very important to make sure you put a glass wall in front of this. If you were just building this, and you were not building the pumpkin and watermelon farms with it, you could put a wall right here, and then you have a water stream underneath to collect all the items. And that will give you a very efficient sugarcane farm that works extremely well. It's also very lag efficient and there is zero loss to this. The sugarcane never gets stuck on top, it never gets left behind or anything like that. So I'm gonna build a few more of these layers up just so you can see it. So that is all that is needed for a highly efficient sugarcane farm. Now what I like to do as well, just because the bottom of the grass is, you can see the dirt. I personally like to stick an extra layer, a line of leaves here. It doesn't matter, it doesn't need to be there for the farm to work, but I just think it makes it look a bit tidier. If you would like to make it more efficient, lighting up the sugarcane can speed up the growth process. It's not a huge amount, but it does help a little bit. So if you've got a ton of glowstone or even just torches, you could, you could even just put some torches down on this lower level. I just like to put them up there because I think it lights it up a bit and it makes it look a bit nicer. But again, you don't really need to worry about that too much unless you really want to. Now one final thing you are going to want to add to your sugarcane farm is an on off switch because as you can see this has not been this has not even been built that long and there's already a ton of sugarcane here and if I kill all the entities you can see there's 43 items and that's just in a cut in about a minute that's enough to make about three stacks of rockets and that's in just a couple of minutes the final thing we want to do is build is build an on off switch all we need to do for that is is literally build just a torch tower and if we just build up the torch tower because this is because this is four blocks high as we build the torch tower up they're all going to trigger at the same time now they trigger off the block or um not the torch if you build this incorrectly and you build it one block higher it'll still work anyway i prefer to do it this way because it looks a bit tidier and then all you need is a lever on the back all the all the pistons will be back like this and they'll do they'll work their magic and they'll continue to harvest sugarcane if you turn this lever off, it'll push out all the pistons and it will hold them out. If you look th if you look down there, you can see the pistons are sticking out and they're not coming back in. And that will stop the growth of the sugarcane and it will reduce the lag on your server or even on your single player worlds. So it's definitely something I would put in myself. It is something I've got. If we have a look at this one here, which has been copied literally straight from this 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 has been copied straight from the River Sticks world. It's even still got Jack on the back of it. So even if I pop into the side of Jack, and we'll have a look back here, you can see there's one on-off switch here, and because I've got two two halves of this, I've got I've got one section over this side, and I've got another section over that side. And you can see the torch tower goes all the way to the top on both sides. So if I flick this one lever, you'll see all the pistons just stick out. So, so that's that's a great way to reduce the lag on the server. And you can see that when it's turned on, they're all pushed out. They're all f sitting flush at the edge of the like on top of the sugarcane. So that is how you make the sugarcane farm. Now you can decorate it any way you want, of course. 
I chose to turn it into a skyscraper because I was putting it into my city, but you can just hide it in a basement somewhere or somewhere underground or you can put it out somewhere. Just don't forget the glass in front because without it, your items are going to be flying a long way. So now let's talk about the pumpkin and melon farm. The pumpkin and melon farm is relatively simple. This is all you need per module. So this is one module. Bear in mind that this is tileable and although there's two pistons here, you will need the two pistons for the first one, but you'll only need one piston per additional slot. And I'll show you why right now. To start off with, we're gonna start with, you can use grass or dirt, anything you can till basically, so that you can have farmland. You need the farmland to be able to plant the seeds. Now it doesn't matter which one you're gonna do, whether it's pumpkins or watermelons, the, the principle will be exactly the same. Now this needs to be hydrated. What we're gonna do, we're just gonna use some glow lichen back here, you can use whatever you want. In all honesty, if you're stretching this out, if you're spreading this out, you won't even need, you probably won't even need these that much. Um, I'm just putting them there to hold the water so it doesn't flow away. You don't need those. If you had more, heaps and heaps and heaps of these next to each other, the, just let the same water bucket flow across. When you look over here, what I've got, I have one bucket of water per layer. So now that we've got the, the water in and our land has been tilled, we can plant our seeds and they won't pop off. I wouldn't plant the seeds until you have the water in because they can just pop off and you can lose them. I'm gonna bone meal this just so it's got a bigger hitbox and it's a bit easier for me to see, but you don't have to bone meal it. You can just wait for it to grow. Now what we wanna do, we want an observer pointing at it so the observer is watching the stem itself. When a melon or a pumpkin grows, it'll grow onto one of these two sides. When that happens, this stem is actually going to change so it will sort of lean over to the side. We're gonna use that to our advantage here. So once we've got the observer into place, we're gonna put our two pistons on each side, or our one piston on, our pistons on each side, and then we're going to put a solid block on the back of the observer, so that way it will get powered. And we just need two more blocks here. They can be solid blocks or slabs or anything you want, as long as they can hold a redstone dust. And we're just gonna put the redstone dust on top. So when this observer detects a change in this stem, such as it growing, it will trigger both of those pistons every time. Now, if you wanna do more of these, you can literally put them side by side, just like this, and you just have the observers pointing into those, like so. And then you'll have your pistons on either side. Make sure they stay hydrated. And then basically just put the redstone dust onto those, put the solid block there, and you now have three different pe different stems being looked at constantly. And if I bone meal those, you'll note, if I bone meal this one, you'll notice that only these two pistons go off. So again, it's highly efficient. It doesn't take away from the efficiency and doesn't create huge amounts of lag because you're not constantly powering every one of these pistons. You're also not taking up the space for the next one to grow. There is one downside to this design is that sometimes when the melons break, they can actually get stuck or get left behind on top of there. And although this is stackable sideways, it's also stackable vertically. So you can basically start the next layer directly here now the beauty of doing it this way, slot into place, we can now just put the water bucket up here and it will actually literally sit on top of the pistons and all the rest of that. Just don't water, if you're on bedrock, try not to waterlog the pistons, but that will contain the water entirely so it doesn't mess up the redstone. And then we can still use the same footprint. So it's an extremely compact design. It's, it's only like a two by two and by what, three. So two by two by three design. It's very small, very efficient, and very easy to make. On And you can make the, both of these farms on day one. So that's it. That's the whole tutorial. There'll be a world download and a, and a Lightmatica schematic in the description. So feel free to download them. Feel free to build them. And if you do, make sure to make sure to share them with me on either Instagram or, or Twitter. I'd love to see what you guys have built, and I'd love to see where you've put them in your worlds. But until then, please leave a like if you enjoyed this. And make sure you subscribe if you want to see more. And I will see you in the next one. See you later.